Hi there guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to see you this week for our bedtime story. Um, I really hope you enjoyed last week's bedtime story and I'm excited about this one. This one's a weird one, so get into it. So this week's story is called The Farm um, and I really hope you enjoy it. It's a little bit different to the normal ones, so I hope you love it. And I'll also be doing the vocabulary at the end for you guys who want to just fall asleep and don't need to listen to any adverts or anything like that. As golden spears of sun crossed the morning sky, it illuminated the luscious grass with fervour. My linen nightgown rubbed against my skin pleasantly as it insulated the heat from my sleep on my body. I looked out onto the flowing hills of green through the slightly waning wooden shutters, fluttering in the morning breeze and breathed a sigh of calm. I could hear the goats mewing soft tones in the light of the morning as I stretched my toes. Little beige fluttering beings sifted in and out of the room and the heat from the wind drifted in with the most glorious warm smell. I grasped both edges of the mattress with both hands and pulled myself up and out of bed. Rolling the covers off my body, I surveyed my legs, bottom to top, speckled with bug bites and rose thorn brush strokes. I turned them round to place them on the creaking wooden floor softly. I faced squarely towards the window and looked out upon a gift that I could never have bought. Trees stood strong in the distance and I could hear the far off cry of shallow water splattering over sharp pebbles. The pleasant sun broke over the horizon and my eyes opened fully into the expectations of a new day. I washed and put on some clean clothes I had washed in the river the night before. I had folded them with flower petals and the smell greeted me like one woman to another. Standing firmly in my well-earned womanhood, I squared my shoulders and made my way outside. Pollen swam up my nostrils and I let out a sneeze that could have been heard from miles. If, of course, there had been any ears to hear it. Wiping my nose with my wrist, I breathed in sharply and carried on, out towards the small makeshift pen I had constructed for my dear friends. Their eyes looked up at me, large, black and expectant, and their ears dance around with every little sound. I greeted them all individually, coarse hair brushing up against my plump skin. Their eyes shined like little dark grapes, washed in the rain, and I walked over to a nearby tree that was blooming graciously this summer month. I stood atop a large copper boulder and reached up to grasp a low hanging branch. I pulled it down with my body weight, stepping off the rock, and my little billy goat friends came running as though to a Christmas turkey. After breakfast had been consumed with gusto, I turned to head over to the river, a small handmade bucket in hand. My linen skirts jumped and snatched on the thorns in amongst the tall grass, my woolen socks shielding me from willing parasites. As I walked, a rustling became louder to my right. I looked into the grass and saw a small field mouse running towards me at great speed, expectant and determined. Hoping he just wanted some company, I bent down slowly to meet his small gaze. On receipt of the tiny creature, I laid out my hand amongst the tall blades Daisies bent around my pink palm and his little grey body shuffled over to me. He pricked his tiny claws upon my skin and wrapped his peach-coloured tail around my pinky. His nose twitched with curiosity and his tiny beady eyes searched for meaning in his new environment. The clasp of his gaze attached to mine hypnotically and I suddenly wondered what he was running from. I looked up behind his tiny body and searched through the grass. Nothing. As I turned to look towards the river, I felt a strong pelt of muscle whip the mouse out of my hand and stow away amongst the grass, too fast for me to find it. A swift reminder of the course of nature and fate hit me just as quickly. I looked towards my empty hand and stood up slowly. 
The thought of the origin or identity of the creature stowed itself away in a small corner of my mind just as quickly as the little mouse had found and, incidentally, left me. My legs started walking towards the glistening water that shone sheets of white light across its surface. A puzzle of incandescence gleamed across it energetically, moment by moment. The sound of the splashes ruffled against my ears to the rhythm of the gusts of the wind. My leaking tendrils drifted over my eyes and tapped across my face until my view was thatched like an old cottage. The pleasance of the air and water caressed me gracefully as I bent down to fill my bucket, fingerprints glassy under the clear water. As I looked up and onto the embankment on the other side of the river, I was met with a piercing stare. A chestnut face with dark eyes, speckled in dark spots, looked at me. He stood triumphant, tail poised stiff at his hindquarters. Him and I stared at each other, unapologetically and non-threateningly. I cocked my head to look at him closer. He remained. Antlers poised upon his head like a magnificent crown. My heart was in awe at his beauty. For a minute of my life, it beat only to experience this moment. All else was gone and I could give myself to the truth and unwavering prowess of a creature who was not my competition and had no intention of ever being so. Simply existing side by side, we swayed in the wind peacefully, casting no thoughts afoot and casting no meaning therein. The powerful intent of the sun beat upon my brow as I stood up, turned and started to wander back to the wooden cottage. The wilting roof dipped down towards the aspiring grass and the door swung open and shut at its own accord. Slightly blue, as I had tried to paint it, it always gave me a sense of satisfaction just to look at it now and then. I wandered over to a trough inside the wooden fence where the goats lived and poured some water into it lovingly. Saving a little for myself, I took it into the house in quiet excitement. With my fingers, I spooned out some vegetable broth from a glass jar and poured some of the water into a pan and s that sat on a holder above the fire in the next room. I lit the fire with a candle still lit on the fireplace and watched as the sparks ignited into flames under the pot. The heat burst towards my face and I smiled in anticipation. As I heard it bubbling in the background, I grabbed a tin cup from the kitchen sideboard and returned to the fire to watch my broth brew patiently. It bubbled around the edges of the pot, dancing and thriving for the fresh air on the outside. It steamed relentlessly and the pleasant smell wafted around my head as the steam st hit my hair and skin. I waited for my broth to reach its full potential. As I leant forward to reach for the saucepan, I heard a little iron bell ringing dully. I looked to my left and through the open door at the silhouette darkening the threshold. One of my billy goats had strolled in and was staring at me intently. His head tipped to the right and the bell rung once as he started to bleat. I pulled my hand away from the pan and stood up to greet him. As I looked into the field, all of the goats had managed to escape their pen. I shuffled past my little tattletale friend and walked into the field to round them up again. One of the smallest goats had made a beeline for the river. As I ran through the field, my boots thumping across the fertile soil, I remembered the last time I had thought it necessary to run this fast. As I ran, my memories came alive around me and little peaceful flies became bullets and the grass rubble. My goats running became tiny barefoot children and my heart started thumping to the beat of my anxious mind. The blue sky looked dim and a lump sat squarely in my throat. Nothing can prepare you for an ambush and certainly nothing can ever let you forget it. As I ran mindlessly through the grass, I tripped on a large rock and fell to the ground, hitting my head with impressive force and reeling as I turned over. 
mind spangled and eyesight speckled with stars, I lay in amongst the thick grass and looked up into the oblivion. The sun was beating down on me, but all my senses felt cold, and I knew a figure was walking towards me in, an, in amongst the emptiness. As I strained my eyes to see them past the sun, I couldn't, as the brightness obstructed their face. I sat up slowly to look at them, only to find it was a messenger. He handed me a tattered, waxed and closed letter with the government seal on the edge of the paper and said, A call, ma'am. I can help you get back to the city. They need you. I hoped it was all part of the illusion and aggravated by the bump on my head. I handed him the letter back and the only words I could croak out were, no thank you. No thank you is not an option, ma'am. Get your things together. He turned his back and walked into the distance towards my little cottage, chimney steaming with the smoke from my fire and steam from my broth. I took a cursory look behind me and the little kid who had quite literally run for the hills was back by my side. I stood up and wandered back to the house picking up the rock I had tripped on and carrying it behind my back. This would be a very short journey for both of us. So I really hope you enjoyed the story tonight. Um, I'm going to do our little vocabulary session and I hope you have a lovely sleep and a lovely night. A thrist. One. Eager. Two. Thirsty. Athlete. One. A skilled performer in physical exercises, in track and field events, for example. Two, a healthy person with natural athletic ability. Athlete's foot, a fungal foot condition. Athletic, one. Of or relating to athletes for athletics. Two, muscular or physically powerful. At home, a social reception in a person's home. A thwart, one, across from, side to side, two, perversely or in opposition, or from the side or in opposition to. Atlantic Ocean, the ocean between Europe and Africa to the east and America to the west. Atlas, a book of maps or charts. Atmosphere, one. The envelope of gases surrounding the Earth and any other planet or any substance. Two, the pervading tone or mood of a place or situation. Three, a unit of pressure equal to mean atmospheric pressure at sea level. Atmospherics, one. Electrical disturbance, in the atmosphere. Two, interference with telecommunications caused by this. Atoll, a ring-shaped coral reef enclosing a lagoon. Atom, one, the smallest particle of a chemical element that can take part in chemical reactions. B, this particle as a source of nuclear energy. Two, the least portion of a thing or quality. Atom bomb, a bomb which derives its power from the release of energy by nuclear fission. Atomic, one, concerned with or using atomic energy or atom bombs. Two, of or relating to an atom or atoms. Atomic clock, a clock in which the time scale is regulated by the vibrations of an atomic or molecular system such as caesium. Atomic energy, nuclear energy. Atomic mass, the mass of an atom measured in atomic mass units. Atomic mass unit, a unit of mass used to express atomic and molecular weights. Atomic number, the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom, which is characteristic of a chemical element and determines its place in the periodic table. 
Atomic physics, the branch of physics concerned with the structure of an atom and the characteristics of the subatomic particles. Atomic pile, a nuclear reactor. Atomic power, nuclear power. Atomic theory, the theory that atoms are composed of subatomic particles. Two, the theory that all matter is made up of tiny indivisible particles called atoms. Atomize, reduced to atoms or fine particles. Atonal, not written in any key or mode. Atone, make amends or expiate. Atonement, one, expiation, reparation for a wrong or injury. Two, the reconciliation of God and man. Atop, on the top or on the top of. Atrium, one, the central court of an ancient Roman house. B, a central court raising through several stories with galleries and rooms opening off of each level. C, a central hall or glazed court with rooms opening off. Two, a cavity in the body, especially one of the two upper cavities of the heart, receiving blood from the veins. Atrocious, one, very bad or unpleasant. Two, extremely savage or wicked. Atrocity, one, an extremely wicked or cruel act. Two, extreme wickedness. Atrophy, one, waste away through undernourishment, aging or lack of use. Two, cause to atrophy, the process of atrophying. Atrophine, a poisonous alkaloid found in deadly nightshade used in medicine. Attach, one, fasten, affix, join. Two, to be very fond of or devoted to. Three, attribute or assign a function or quality or characteristic. B, include cause to form a part of a thing. Five, take part in or join. Six, appoint for special temporary duties. Seven, by legal authority. Attachment, one, a thing attached or to be attached. Two, affection or devotion. Three, a means of attaching. Four, the act of attaching or the state of being attached. Five, legal seizure. Six, a temporary position in or second secondment to an organisation. Attack, one, act against with force. Two, to hurt or defeat. Three, criticise adversely. Four, act harmfully upon. Attain. One, arrive at or reach. Two, gain or accomplish. Three, arrive at by conscious development or effort. Attainment. 1. Something attained or achieved, an accomplishment. 2. The act or an instant of attaining. Attar. A fragrant essential oil. Attempt. 1. Seek to achieve or complete. 2. Seek to claim or master. 1. An act of attempting, an endeavour. 2. An attack, an effort. Attend, one, be present at, two, be present, be present in a serving capacity, wait, three, escort or accompany, four, turn or apply one's mind, focus one's attention to, be, deal, five, follow as a result from. Attendance, the act of attending or being present to the number of people present. Attendant, 
a person employed to wait on others or provide a service, one, accompanying, two, waiting on. Attention, one, the act or faculty of applying one's mind, two, consideration or care, three, ceremonious politeness, four, an erect attitude of readiness. Attentive, one, paying attention, two, assiduously polite, three, heedful. Attenuate, one, make thin, two, reduce in force, value or virulence, one, slender, two, tapering gradually, three, rare fled. Attest, one, certify the validity of or be evidence, two, bear witness to. Attic, of or relating to ancient Athens or Attica or the form of Greek spoken there. Attic, one, the uppermost story in a house, Yusu, under the roof, two, a room in the attic area, a small order, above a taller one. Attire, dress, especially in fine clothes or formal wear, clothes, especially fine or formal. Attitude, one, a settled opinion or way of thinking, b, behaviour reflecting this, two, a bodily posture, a pose adopted for dramatic effect, three, Trusolence, arrogance, B, style or swagger. Attorney, one, a person appointed to act for others in business or legal matters. Two, a qualified lawyer, especially one representing a client in a law court. Attorney General, the chief legal officer in England, the US and other countries. Attract, one, Draw or bring to oneself or itself. Two, be attractive to, fascinate. Three, exert a pull on. Attraction. One, the act or power of attracting. B, a person or thing that attracts by arousing attention. Two, the force by which bodies attract or approach each other. Attractive. One, attracting or capable of attracting. Two, aesthetically pleasing. Attribute, one, ascribe to or regard as the effect of. Two, regard as having been created or originated by. Three, regard as a characteristic of, regard as possessing or having attributed. Attrition, one, the act or process of gradually wearing out, especially by friction. Two, abrasion. Attune, one, adjust to a person or thing or to a situation. Two, bring an orchestra instrument into musical accord. Atypical, not typical, not conforming to a type. Aubergine. One, a tropical plant having erect or spreading branches bearing egg-shaped fruit. Two, this fruit eaten as a vegetable. Three, the dark purple colour of this fruit. Auburn, reddish brown. Auction, a sale of goods in which articles are sold to the highest bidder. Auctioneer. A person who conducts auctions professionally by calling for bids and declaring goods sold. Auction house. A company that runs auctions. Auction room. The premises where auctions take place. Audacious. 1. Daring. Bold. 2. Impudent. Audible. Capable of being heard. Audience. 1. The assembled listeners or spectators at an event or the people addressed by the film or the play. Two, 
a formal interview with a person in authority. Three, archaic, a hearing. Audio, sound or the reproduction of sound. Audio cassette, a cassette of audio tape. Audiology, the science of hearing. Audio tape, one, a magnetic tape on which sound can be recorded or a length of this, especially an audio cassette. Two, a sound of recording on tape. Audio visual, using both sight and sound. Audit, an official examination of accounts. Audition, an interview for a role as a singer, actor, etc. consisting of a practical demonstration of suitability. One, an interview at an audience. Two, the interviewed at an audition. Auditor. One, a person who conducts an audit. Two, a listener. Auditory. One, concerned with hearing. Two, received by the ear. Auger. One, a tool resembling a large corkscrew for boring holes. Ought. Archaic. Anything of all. Augment, increase. Augustine, one, relating to the reign of the Roman Emperor Augustus as an outstanding period of Latin literature, two, refined and classical in style. Och. Any marine diving bird of the family Alcidae, native to the northern oceans, with heavy body, short wings, and black and white plumage, e.g. the puffin. Old, old. Old Lang Syne. Times long past, Scots. Au natural, one, uncooked in the simplest way. Two, in its natural state. Aunt, one, the sister of one's father or mother. Two, an uncle's wife. Three, an unrelated woman, friend of a child or children. Aunt Sally, one, a game in which players throw sticks or balls at a wooden dummy. Two, the object of unreasonable attack. Au pair, a young foreign person, especially a woman, helping with housework in exchange for room, board and pocket money. Aura, one, the distinctive atmosphere diffused by or attending a person or a place. Two, a supposed subtle emanation surrounding the body of a living creature. Three, a subtle emanation or aura from flowers. Three, Premonitory symptoms in epilepsy. Oral, of or relating to or receiving by the ear. Aureate, one, golden or gold coloured. Two, resplendent. Oracle, one, a small muscular pouch on the surface of each atrium of the heart or the atrium itself to the external part of the ear. Aurora, one, a luminous electrical atmospheric phenomenon. Auspicious, one, of good omen, favourable, two, prosperous. Austere, one, severely simple, two, morally strict or stern. Austral, one, southern, two, of Australia or Australasia. Autarky, one, absolute sovereignty, two, depotism, three, autarkic country or society. Autarchy. 1. Self-sufficiency, especially as an economic system. 2. 
estate, etc. run according to such system. Authentic. 1. Of undisputed origin, genuine. 2. Reliable or trustworthy. Authenticate. 1. Establish the truth or genuineness of. 2. Validate. Author. 1. A writer, especially of books. 2. The originator of an event. 1. Be the author or originator of. Authoring. The creation of programs, databases, etc. for computer applications. Authoritarian. 1. Favouring, encouraging or enforcing strict obedience with authority. 2. Domineering. Authoritative. 1. Being recognised as true or dependable. 2. Commanding or self-confident. 3. Official, supported by a, an authority. Authority. 1. The power or right to enforce obedience or delegated power. 2. A person or body having authority. 3. An influence exerted on opinion because of recognised expertise or such an influence expressed by a book or an expert in a subject. Authorise. 1. Sanction. 2. Give authority or commission. Thank you guys so much for making it this far. I hope you have a lovely night and I hope you enjoyed our story tonight. I'll see you next week. Bye.